Let's now talk about how to evaluate an integral by changing variables, not necessarily to polar or cylindrical or spherical coordinates, but to any coordinate system you like. So the general procedure has four steps. So first you want to pick the transformation. So here you need to be clever. You need to figure out what transformation or change of variable is going to make the integral nicer and easier to evaluate or understand. And once you've chosen your transformation, you have to figure out what is the new region, right? So you're starting with some region R, and you need to figure out what is the region S corresponding to R. The third, you need to calculate the magnification factor, which is the absolute value of the Jacobian. And finally, you can now use the change of variable formula to evaluate the integral in your new coordinates. So let's do an example to see how this works. So the problem we're going to consider is how do we calculate the double integral over r of cosine of y minus x over y plus x dA, where r is the region shown. So it's bounded by quadrilateral. The edges are straight lines going between the points 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 2, and 0, 1. So if we try to do this directly, say if we integrate over y first, this looks like a very difficult integral to evaluate. So we want to change coordinates so that instead of having cosine of something complicated, we have cosine of something as simple as possible. For example, it would be nice if one of these things were u and the other were v. So let's um, change variables. so that u equals x plus y and v equals y minus x. Right? So this is, the, this is the first step. It's the step that requires creativity. So I'm being creative and saying, well, let's make the numerator and the denominator of this coordinate functions and see if that helps. OK, now this isn't quite the way it's supposed to look, because we're not supposed to have u and v being functions of x and y. We're supposed to have x and y being functions of u and v. So I need to solve for x and y in terms of u and v. OK, so to solve for x, I can take the first equation and subtract the second equation and divide by 2. So I get that x equals u minus v over 2. And to solve for y, I can add the two equations and divide by 2. So I get that y equals u plus v over 2. And this is the transformation t. Right? Okay, so that's step 1. The step two is we have to figure out what is the region in the uv coordinates corresponding to the region in the xy coordinates. So let's draw the um, uv plane over here. So let's first figure out what's happening to the boundary edges. All right. So this boundary edge up here, this is the line x plus y equals 2. Now, remember that x plus y is equal to u. So this line corresponds to the line u equals 2 over here. And this diagonal boundary edge here, this is the line x plus y equals 1. So in the uv plane, that corresponds to the line u equals 1. OK, now what about the other two edges? Well, so this horizontal edge, this is where y equals 0. Now, y is u plus v over 2. So y equals 0 when u plus v equals 0. Okay, and u plus v equals 0 is v equals minus u. So that's this line here. 
Well, I guess it's reconstruct over here. So this is the line u plus v equals zero. And what about this edge over here? Well, this is where x equals zero. And x is u minus v over two. So x equals zero when u minus v is equal to zero. And that's the line u equals v, which goes like this. Okay, so the boundary edges of a region correspond to this segment here, this segment here, um, and then this segment here, and this segment here. And if your map is a bijection, then the um, region S is going to be enclosed by the the um, curves corresponding to the boundary. So S is this region in here. Um, if we're being careful, we should check carefully that our um, transformation is a bijection. Um, but actually, you can see that because I can solve for X and Y in terms of U and V, and conversely, I can solve for U and V in terms of X and Y. So that means that each x, y corresponds to exactly one u and v, and vice versa. So it is a bijection. And we figured out that this region r corresponds to this region s. OK, so that's step two. So that's the region we need to integrate over. And the next, um, next task is we need to calculate the Jacobian to get the magnification factor. So the magnification factor, so the Jacobian, d of x, y over u, v, is the determinant of dx du, dx dv, dy du, dy dv, so dx du, well x is u over 2 minus v over 2, so that's a half, and dx dv is minus a half, and dy du is a half, and dy dv is also a half. And then I take the two diagonal entries minus the product of the other two entries. <clears throat> so I get a half times a half minus, minus a half times a half. So that's a quarter plus a quarter, which is a half. And the magnification factor is the absolute value of this, which is also a half. Okay, so now we're all ready to go. Now we can evaluate the integral in the UV plane. It may or may not be calculable, but let's try it and see. Okay, so we have that the double integral over r of our function f, which here is cosine of y minus x over y plus x dA is the double integral over s of our function rewritten in terms of u and v. Now, remember that u equals x plus y and v equals y minus x. So the function is cosine of v over u. And then we need the magnification factor, which was a half, and then dA. And the region s, remember, looks like this. So this is u equals 1, u equals 2, u equals v, u equals minus v. Okay, now we can integrate over v first or, or over u first. And which do you think is going to be easier? Well, let's integrate over v first, because then u is like a constant, so we're basically integrating cosine of v. Okay, so this is the integral as u goes from 1 to 2, 
and V goes from minus U to U of one half cosine of V over U dV to U. Okay, and then um, the antiderivative of cosine of V over U, remember U is like a constant here, so we can take one half times u times sine of u over u. Because when I differentiate this, the u is like a constant, so it just pulls out of the sine. Um, so, so in other words, I get 1 over u times this u, and then times cosine of u over u. Okay, and now I have to evaluate this, and we need to make sure to make our v's not look like our u's. That's the hardest part of this. So evaluate this at v equals u and v equals minus u. Okay, so this is the integral from 1 to 2. And, and also there's a, sorry, there's a du here at the end. Okay, so it's a half of what? So when v equals u, this is sine of 1. Right? Um, so this is u times sine of 1 and then minus, so when v equals minus u, v over u is minus 1, so I have minus u times sine of minus 1 du. I can simplify that a little bit. The sine of minus 1 is minus sine of 1, so I can write this whole thing as the integral from 1 to 2 of u sine of 1 du. Okay, and now the sine of 1 is like a constant, so I just get sine of 1 over 2 times u squared, evaluated at u equals 2 and u equals 1. Okay, so I get sine of 1 over 2 times 3. So I get 3 over 2 times sine of 1. Right, so that was a little bit lengthy, but we started with a practically impossible integral over here, and we got a manageable integral over here, and it worked.